Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a polynomial system. We have x squared plus y squared equals 13 and x cubed plus y cubed equals 35. And we're going to be solving for x and y values. We're also going to be looking at some results from alpha as well as some graphs. All right, I'll be presenting two methods. I was thinking about the third one, but you'll probably come up with something. Let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I'm going to do something super brute force -y, right? And we could kind of split this up into 1a and 1b. For example, if you isolate y cubed from the second equation, you get 35 minus x cubed, and then cube root both sides. And the, the reason why I start with the cubic equation is because we, I don't want to deal with the plus minus signs. They're kind of annoying, aren't they? So let's go ahead and cube root both sides, and we get the cube root of... 35 minus x cubed. Now we can go ahead and plug this into the first equation, which is the sum of two squares. So now we can go ahead and replace y with this right here, and that's going to give us something interesting, right? Not really. x squared plus the cube root of 35 minus x cubed squared equals 13. Do you find this interesting? I don't. But anyways, one thing you can do is Isolate the cube root of something squared, and then you can basically write it this way. And then cube both sides, because you want to get rid of the cubic root, and you can do it. But there is a kind of like a somewhat easier way to get there. Let me show you. So this is going to be our 1b. With the 1b, we're going to do the following. We have two equations, sum of squares and sum of cubes. From each one, we're going to isolate the y term. So y squared can be written as 13 minus x squared. And from here, y cubed can be written as 35 minus x cubed, right? Now, notice that y squared and y cubed, if you look at their exponents, 2 and 3, what's the least common of 2 and 3? I'm pretty sure you know this. Come on. It's 6, right? Yeah. So we can do the following. If we raise y squared to the third, that gives us y to the six. Or if we raise y cubed to the second, we also get y to the six. So they're equal. Let's go ahead and do it then. Let's cube this expression and square this expression because they're equal, right? We get the following equation, which is very, very hectic. I mean, hexic, right? If you expand it and do the work, I did it for you, you get 2x to the 6 minus 39x to the 4th minus 70x cubed plus 507, such a weird number, x squared minus 972 equals 0. So that's a very hexic equation. How do you solve it? There's no formula. You can try to factor. You can try rational root theorem. Irrational root theorem, it doesn't exist. But anyways, by doing this, you're going to find six solutions. All right? But let me not tell you what they are because I saved it for the second method. But we can always come back and I can give you all the solutions. Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. For my second method, I'm going to do something more sensible, kind of like something that makes more sense. And that is using symmetric polynomials, obviously, right? I know you, a lot of you have thought about this. So here's how it works. We have identities for sum of squares, right? X squared plus Y squared can be written as X plus Y squared. And notice that there's a term in the middle that you can get rid of, and that'll be it. And for the cubes, you must remember this because I use this so many times, along with the cubic formula. This is x plus y to the third. From that, you subtract 3xy, x plus y. And can you continue this pattern like x to the fourth plus y to the fourth, x plus y to the fourth plus? Yes, you can. There's a really nice way to come up with all these things that are formulas, so on and so forth. But let's just settle um, for these right now uh, because that's what we need. So uh, we know that this is equal to 13 and this is equal to 35. So what does that mean? It actually gave us a system of equations. Well, didn't we have a system before? Yeah, but this system is much better because you only have two variables. What are they? X plus Y and XY. Let's go ahead and do this naming. Uh, X plus Y, let's call that S for sum. And XY, I want to use P for a product. Don't use P for something else, right? Okay, now we get the following from here. If you consider these two equations, we're going to get S squared minus 2P or not 2p, I shouldn't say that, 
equals 13 and then p cubed i mean s cubed i got stuck on p 3 ps equals 35. awesome this is a really awesome system you know what you can solve it that's the goal the first system you couldn't solve because it was like a sum of squares and sum of cubes such a weird combination right but yes these are very easy to solve especially looking at the first equation what do you notice i hope you said i can isolate p right so p becomes s squared minus 13 divided by two kind of like switch around and then that p can be substituted here awesome s cubed minus 3s and then p is going to be replaced with s squared minus 13 over 2 equals 35. i think we used this technique before i can't remember exactly hopefully it's not the same problem if i did i apologize but anyways you're gonna let me know right so we get a cubic equation from here but let's go ahead and multiply everything by 2 first and then we're gonna distribute next 2s cubed minus 3s cubed negative s cubed plus 39s equals 70. Let's go ahead and put everything on the positive s cubed side, which is s cubed minus 39s plus 70 equals 0. Such a nice cubic equation, right? Well, you can definitely use the cubic formula. And you know what makes it even better? This is a depressed cubic, a cubic in depression, right? So how do we get it out of depression? Well, by solving it. How do you solve it? There's something called cubic formula, so on and so forth. I'm not going to get into that because you can also use guess and check. Isn't that an awesome method? Like, what could S be? If S is rational, it's going to ha have to divide 70. It could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and they're negatives, whatever. It can't be 7, can it? Yeah, of course. But it can't be 6, obviously. I tried S equals 1, obviously. You could immediately see the sum of coefficients. Come on, you know that, right? 1 plus 70 is 71. It's not going to work. S equals 2 is going to give me 8 minus 78 plus 70. Uh-oh, 78 minus 70 is 0. Nice, beautiful, right? S equals 2 works. So we can go ahead and take it out of the picture. What does that mean? We can use polynomial division, long division, short division, whatever. But I like to do it my way or highway, which is this. Since S equals 2 is a solution, S minus 2 must be a factor. But that's what the factor theorem said, right? So... By manipulating these expressions, we can get factors of s minus 2. How? Well, I can kind of subtract 2s squared. By the way, notice that I could also subtract 8, but I don't want to go with that. I want to go with consecutive powers of s because that's cooler. Now, obviously, by subtracting 2s squared, you just generated a factor of s minus 2. You don't believe me? Take out s squared, and yes, there you go. See, I told you. This is a really cool method. Get used to it because I use it all the time, and it's fun. Now, we have to follow up with another 2s squared because they have to cancel out. Come on, we don't have it in the first place. But then I kind of need to follow up with negative 39s, but it's not going to work. I still need s minus 2. Look at that. I do need s minus 2 all the time. So let's go down subtract 4s. Notice, again, this generates it because if you take out 2s, s minus 2. How do I know that, right? Well, here's the thing. Very easy. You just divide 2s squared by s, you get 2s, and then multiply by 2. But all of that obviously is done mentally, so it's pretty quick. Anyways, you can get used to it. It just takes some practice. So then I kind of need to continue with 4, 4s plus 4s, but I have negative 39s. So I might as well just do minus 35s and we're balanced. Cool, right? And then of course the last term is just 70. Automatically you have to write it in there. Guess what? This is factorable by grouping and everything is awesome everything is awesome so s squared times s minus 2 2 s times s minus 2 minus 35 times s minus 2 beautiful right okay because math is beautiful and from here we get s squared plus 2 s minus 35 equals 0 awesome and guess what this quadratic can also be factored what else can you ask for right well it's going to be two two numbers whose uh, sum is two and whose sum is negative 35 i think those are seven and negative five this means s plus seven and s minus five as factors awesome such a beautiful equation with all integer solutions right and obviously these are all factors of 70 notice that now what are you going to do s equals two s equals negative seven and s equals five let me tell you what these give us p equals negative nine halves p equals six and then p equals 18 to keep long story short now here's what happens the first equation this one by the way you could kind of use thanks to vieta we can use vieta's formulas t squared minus 2t or not 2t or 2 anyways equals zero and from here we get t equals 
by the way, t represents x and y here. Uh, 2 plus minus root 22 over 2, or 1 plus minus square root of 11 over 2. From here, we get t squared minus 5t plus 6, which gives us t equals 2 and t equals 3. Again, those are xy values. And the third one gives you complex solutions, and I'll tell you what they are. Those are going to give you t equals negative 7 plus minus i root 23 over 2. Beautiful, right? Awesome. These are going to be x to y values. And let's go ahead and take a look at something. What is that? Well, from alpha, of course, these are the solutions. Didn't show us complex. I guess it did, but I didn't include it. And here's the graph. Isn't that beautiful? The sum of two cubes generates such a nice equation. Is that... Uh, What's that called? Elliptic curve? I don't know. Who knows? You'll probably know. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.